right, here we go. I'm seeing the thing move there, so we are recording. Uh, the title of this uh, study today is called The Mob Mentality and What the Bible Has to Say About It. Now, we all have our opinions, don't we? Uh, every person has an opinion. So if you talk to five different people about a subject, each one will have a little different opinion about it. But here's what's good about the Bible. The Bible is relevant to any subject that we can talk about. And, and what we've been seeing recently in America is uh, we've been seeing a lot on the news about mobs and, and people going out and mobs meeting people at restaurants. Uh, we've seen them clawing on the doors of the Supreme Court. We've seen them, we've heard in the news about them literally cracking a door trying to get into this news reporter's house and his wife there. Thank God the kids were not there. That would traumatize them forever. And uh, even even if we, if we remember, we can remember back to the uh, riots after the Ferguson, Missouri verdict was proclaimed. How about go a little farther back in the Rodney King incident? You remember that? You remember seeing the v footage of the uh, tractor and trailer driver that they, Rodney King I believe was his name, they pulled out and they took this brick and they busted him in the head and they, they, they cracked his head open and his brains was leaking out and he almost died. So that was a mob violence right there. And of course if you've been around, you can remember back in the 60s, that was one of the most tumultuous times in American history was the 1960s. Uh, so mobs have been around for a long time. And when we study this today, we're going to find out a little bit about the mob mentality. Where does it come from? What does it mean? We're going to look at different mobs in the Bible and we're going, to, we're going to see that some of the mob behavior today mimics some of the behavior that we see in the Bible. Now here's the number one thing to get from the study today. The mob mentality that we have witnessed where people don't care about other people's property or feelings is satanic in origin and there's going to be a reason I say that. Interestingly, the first mob that we read about and the last mob that we read about in the Bible, the instigator of that mob was none other than Satan himself. Let's look at the first mob that we read about in the Bible. Go with me to Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 12. Isaiah 14, 12. Satan was named Lucifer in heaven and he literally attempted a coup against God in heaven. He persuaded a third of the angels to make war with God in heaven. Lucifer did, or Satan and they attempted to unseat God from His throne. Look what Isaiah chapter 14 verse 12 says. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which did weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will send above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. So the very first mob that you read about and the mob violence we read about is in heaven itself. And if you look at a mob... There's something that is always characteristic of a mob. They have a leader of the mob that does the 
instigating or the working the mob up into a frenzy. There's always somebody that is, it's their job to get the crowd worked up into a frenzy. And we're going to see that is true in some of the mobs we read about in the Bible. So the very first mob we read about is in heaven itself and Satan started that mob and he persuaded them to actually make war against God. Imagine the audacity of thinking that you're actually going to overcome God. Now that tells us what that tells us is uh, that a mob and the leaders of a mob is not interested in sharing power or talking it out. All they want to do is establish their way regardless of if they have to tear others down to do it. Now that's exactly what Satan wanted to do in heaven. He wanted to get up this mob and he wanted to unseat God from his throne and establish his own throne. So the mob mentality, number one, is recognized by active rebellion and with no desire to have a dialogue or coexist with the opposition. There's no desire for a mob. Their desire is to take over and establish themselves as the ones in authority. Uh, and that is exactly what we see in heaven with Satan leading that rebellion to authority. Now the next mob we read about in the Bible is in Genesis chapter 19, if you'll go there with me. Genesis chapter 19. And of course, if you're familiar with Genesis chapter 19, you immediately know that's the story of Sodom and Gomorrah and what happened there. But Basically, a lot had it invited some angels that looked like men into his house to stay the night. And while these men were residing at Lot's house, conversing with Lot and maybe having some conversation and a meal, there were some people started banging and beating on the door. A mob, in other words, had gathered outside of Lot's house. And guess who was in this mob? Lot's own two son-in-laws were in this mob. So that leads me to believe that they may have been the ones that actually gathered up this mob. Uh, now when we go to Genesis chapter 19 and verse 14... Now they've appeared at the door. They're beating on the door. Now here's what happens. And Lot went out and spake unto his sons-in-law. So his son-in-laws were the representatives of this mob. So this leads me to believe that they were the ones that had worked these men up into a frenzy. Who married, which married his daughters and said, Up, get you out of this place. For the Lord will destroy this city. But he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons-in-laws. They had no desire whatsoever to talk to Lot. There was a total disrespect of boundaries. It didn't bother them to come and try to beat Lot's door down. They had a total disrespect and disregard for boundaries, spiritual and physical. Now what these men wanted to do was an abomination unto the Lord. They wanted to have sex with these male angels. So they had a, a total disregard for spiritual boundaries, this mob, and a total disregard for physical boundaries. Now folks, we've seen that literally in America in recent weeks and months. 
that a mob would have total disregard for boundaries. A person's home is their boundary. When you go in to eat at a restaurant, that should be a protected space. But we've seen mobs show up and harass people. And there's a danger in that, and we're going to see why later. When a mob just shows up and gets up in your face, there's a good chance that violence will erupt. So to keep the violence from erupting, the mobs must be kept out. But there is a total lack for boundaries, a total disrespect for boundaries, spiritual and physical. That's the second characteristic of a mob. They had no respect for Lot's house, for his convictions or his property, They had a total disrespect. They knew Lot was a righteous man. The Bible calls him a righteous man over in the New Testament. And these men knew that Lot tried to live a Christian life and it didn't matter to them. They were going to have sex with these men. It didn't matter if Lot had to witness it while it was going on or not. And they had a total disrespect for his viewpoint or his physical property. That is a characteristic of a mob mentality. Now let's go to the New Testament and look at another mob. Matthew chapter 27. Now this was a religious mob. You mean to tell me that religious people can be full of the devil? Yes, yes I do. Read John chapter 8. Jesus called the Pharisees... Ye are of your father the devil. Why? Because you seek to murder me, a man that hath done no evil. So in Matthew chapter 27, the mob that we see here is a religious mob that is full of bitterness, hatred, and murder. In other words, they're full of the devil. Religious people that are full of the devil. Wow. What a concept. But in Matthew chapter 27, uh, starting in verse 20, in verse 20. Well, there we go. But the chief priests and the elders, notice what they did, persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas, notice this, and destroy Jesus. So there is something common in this mob that there was in the mob in heaven. What was that? There was somebody that worked everyone up into a frenzy, an instigator, an initiator. Same way it is today. And it's the same today. You're right, brother. So these chief priests, they persuaded the multitude against Jesus. And they actually, this multitude actually accepted a mass murderer instead of Jesus. So the mob mentality then is, and if you look at, uh, if you read on in verse 39 through 34, the same crowd that was there during Jesus' trial was circled around his cross when he was hanging on the cross. Jesus was literally taking his final breaths and in a a Roman crucifixion, you had to struggle for every breath. You had to lift yourself up just to get a breath. And these men here, these evil fiends of hell, were were mocking a dying man. Who does that? Even us when we hear of a when we hear of a mass murderer being executed, it's not a happy time. We it's always a somber moment even though they're guilty and they deserve that punishment. We're never happy when somebody's life ends. But these men were. They they did not just settle for seeing Jesus' body beaten until it was unrecognizable. 
They, they did not settle with just seeing Jesus experience the shame of being naked. No, they had to get in their last harsh words at the moment he was dying. Now, how much evil, how much more evil can you get than that? That would be like me going up to somebody and as they were taking their last breaths, making fun of them while they were dying. That would be equal to that. Now, in verse 39, here's what they said. And they that passed by reviled him, wagging their heads, and saying, Thou that destroyest the temple and buildest it in three days, save thyself if thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross. Likewise also the chief priest mocking him, with the scribes and the elders said, He saved others, himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross, and we will believe him. Now here is what's the most awful part. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now. Notice this. If he will have him. For he said, I am the Son of God. Now, if the devil himself was standing at the cross looking up at Jesus as he was dying, he could have not said any more harsh words. You know why? Because these people were full of Satan anyway. So Satan is behind the mob mentality, folks. He was in heaven. He was at Sodom and Gomorrah. He is here at the cross. The number one takeaway from today's study is the mob mentality that we see in the Bible and today is satanic in origin. Satanic in origin. Now let's go and look at another mob. Uh, let's go to there's three different instances where Paul experienced mobs during his missionary journeys <clears throat> at least three there may have been more one was in Ephesus if you'll go with me to Acts chapter 19 <clears throat> we'll find another characteristic of a mob mentality and here is what it is uh, confusion, wrath, and an attempt to intimidate or overpower the opposition into silence. That's what we're going to find here in Acts chapter 19. The city was Ephesus. And when you look at verse 23, it gives us an idea. And the instigator of the mob in this instance was Demetrius the silversmith. And he persuaded a mob to show up. Here's, what, here's how it went down. And the same time there were, arose no small stir about that way. If you live for the Lord... If you live a consistent biblical life, regardless of the era you live in, you're going to stir up some opposition. It's inevitable. For a certain man named Demetrius the silversmith, which, which made silver shrines for Diana, brought, brought no small gain unto the craftsmen whom he called together with the workmen of like occupation and said, Sirs, you know that by this craft we have our wealth. Moreover, you see and hear that not alone in Ephesus, but almost throughout all Asia, this Paul. Can you imagine Demetrius gritting his teeth? Now actually, the word Nash, G-N-A-S-H, if you look up the definition, it means the gritting of teeth. From wrath. And that's what happened with Stephen, which was another mob. Stephen preached the gospel. Of course, he didn't hold back. The message was scathing. 
But at the end of it, it said they gnashed on him with their teeth. That don't mean they went and started biting him. That means they gritted their teeth. They were so angry. And they, they stoned Stephen. That was the mob mentality. Now this mob with Stephen did not stop with just threats. They carried out with the violence. That's the danger of the mob mentality. If left unchecked, it will resort to violence, not if. That's why it's so dangerous in the times we're living in. If the mob mentality continues in the, in the United States as it has been, somebody is going to get hurt. There is no doubt that if if you let a mob have their way, they will resort to violence. Does anybody have any doubts that if they could have bursted down the Supreme Court doors that day, how many believes they would have just went in there and had a nice, sweet little dialogue with the newly elected Supreme Court justice? No way. They would have grabbed him and they would have done what a mob did as we're going to read about with Paul. There's no doubt in my mind. People that are beating down doors don't have good intentions, folks. I promise you that. Now, if somebody came beating on your door, demanding to be let in, would you assume they had good intentions? No, I would, I would assume they had bad intentions. There'd be something waiting on the other side if they did burst my door down that would stop the bad intentions in a heartbeat. So here, these were, these were worshipers of Diana. Now look what it says down here. Uh, verse 28. And when they heard these sayings, they were full of wrath and cried out, saying, Great is Diana of Ephesians. Now, Look at, skip over to verse 33. And they drew Alexander out of the multitude, the Jews putting him forward, and Alexander beckoned with the hand and would have made his defense unto the people. He wanted to talk to this mob. Do you remember I told you before, a mob, the mentality of a mob is they have no desire to have an intelligent conversation or dialogue. All they're interested in is bringing your, your way of doing things down and establishing their own way of doing things. That's all they're interested in. And if we believe that we are going to have a dialogue with a mob, we are being naive if we believe that. So this man tried to reason with a mob and here's what happened. But when they knew he was a Jew, all with one voice about the space of two hours, cried out, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. You know what they were doing? They were shouting him down. They were not allowing him to, to give his side of the story. They were shouting him down. Now what have we seen in America when a mob shows up, such as somebody holding a pro-life sign, we've seen in America recently pro-life signs being ripped out of Christians' hands and ripped up. And when the Christian attempted to say something, they had the bullhorns and the whistles drowning him out, drowning his voice out. In other words, the mob mentality is not interested in allowing no one's voice to be heard but their voice. The mob that showed up at Lot's door was not interested in listening to Lot. They had one objective on their mind and that was it. And nothing was going to stop them. And if they had to, they would have resorted to violence. That violence was interrupted when they were blinded by the angels. The mob mentality has no desire to listen to your viewpoint. They're only interested in theirs. And they will, good do, they will drown your voice out by any means. Right here it is in the Bible. 
a mob drowning a man's voice out. Now, we've seen one instance where a mob resorted to violence with Stephen. Let's look at two more instances. Go with me to... Uh, to uh, I won't say, I won't spend a lot of time on these. But basically, there's another instance in the Bible where Paul was preaching in a theater and the mob became enraged and they were trying to beat Paul to death and the Roman soldiers had to come in and grab Paul from the mob or they would have beat him to death. He was beaten so badly that he wanted to continue preaching to them. And he had to get up on an upper level away from the crowd because if he would have put back with the crowd, they would have tried to beat him to death again. But he was beaten so badly that they had to carry him up the stairs with that mob. They tried to beat him to death. Now there was another time when Paul was actually killed by a mob at Lystra. I believe it's in Acts chapter 14. There's just one verse that talks about that. But Paul was preaching at Lystra and they became so enraged that they grabbed him, they took him to the outskirts of town, and they stoned him to death. Now when the other disciples were looking at him, he got back up, so God brought him back to life. During the time period, Paul went to the third heaven and saw things, but God let him come back to earth and come back to life. But he was literally almost beaten to death one time by mobs, Paul was, and the second time he was stoned to death by a mob. Now these were religious people, these mobs were, However, they were full of pride, bitterness, hatred, and murder. So those characteristics, doesn't, it doesn't matter if you're secular or if you're religious. It can, a mob mentality can exist anywhere those characteristics are. Now, let's look now at the last mob that I am thinking of and if you go with me to Revelation chapter 20 remember the first mob we read about was led by Satan and ironically the last mob that we read about in the Bible is led by none other than Satan himself now in all the mobs that we've read about in the Bible and the mob mentality that we've read about, it's all satanic in origin. So these characteristics we read about, the intolerance, the trying to silence you, the violence, the total disrespect of spiritual and physical boundaries, the total lack of compassion, all of those are satanic in origin. And there's nothing good about the mob mentality, whether it's in the Bible or whether it's in the news that we see every day. Let's read about the last mob in the Bible. Revelation chapter 20. Let's get, look at verse 7. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. Now what's he going to do? He's going to do what he did when he was in heaven. He's going to go out and he's going to incite mob violence. Only the only difference this with this is, this is the biggest mob that's ever been created since the history of mankind. This mob is so big that when Jesus destroys them, the blood is going to run 
the height of a horse's bridle. That's what the Bible predicts. That's a big mob. The buzzards are going to eat their flesh. So you know what that tells us? They're not going to win. And what does that tell us about a mob mentality? What does that tell us about Satan? No matter how many times he's been defeated and cast out of heaven, he still is trying to establish himself as the power and take Jesus down. So the mob, the leaders of the mob never learn their lessons. Now, in, in starting in verse um, 7, And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, and gather them together to battle. Now, he has to persuade them first He's going to go out and he's going to have an antichrist propaganda campaign and it's nothing more than a mass mob inciting a mass mob. That's, that's all it is. That's all propaganda ever has been. Propaganda is nothing more than persuading a mob to act in a certain way. That's all it is. When you read about Hitler's propaganda campaigns, that was to create a mentality within people that had a hatred against the Jews. And and get to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. So the majority of people on earth at that time, just like today, are going to be lost just like today. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about, now notice this, and the beloved city. So Jerusalem is going to have something to do with the whole scheme of things at this time. And notice this, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. You know where this fire came from? The flame that proceeded out of Jesus' mouth. Revelation 19. The fire came down and devoured the wicked mob in Sodom and Gomorrah. So, here's the lesson. All of the negative mob mentality that we're seeing is satanic in origin. It started with Satan and it's going to end with Satan. The mob mentality will be with mankind until Jesus once and for all destroys the mobs that are going together together against Him. We are going to experience mob mentality until the Lord comes back. I'm sorry to inform you of that, but that's the way it's going to be. We experienced it in the 60s. We've experienced it the decades after that. We've recently experienced it in America where we see our elected officials directing people to go out at gas stations, restaurants, grocery stores, get up in their faces and harass them. Now around here folks, if you do that around here, the, the, the result is not going to be happy. Make no mistake about it, there are powers of darkness in the world today that would love to see Americans killing each other. Why? They want to, they want to tear down democracy and they want to dis- establish socialism in America. So the, how do you do that? Why you, you get a revolution where Americans are killing each other and you say see this democracy thing it's not working out folks we need this we need to get rid of this and do this they want power they want power it's a power struggle it was that way with Satan and it's that way now 
the mob mentality that is not interested in listening to others. You're right, Brother Gary. Their objective is power. And it's going to end one day. We may have to tolerate it now, but it's going to end one day when the Lord comes back. So I hope that gives us a good idea when we look out and see the mob mentality today, we can say, oh, wow, that's, uh, we've read about that in the Bible. That's existed since, the, since man, even before man, it existed in heaven. Well, that's going to go on now. We get a good idea of where it came from and we can deal with it better. Like so, mob, I think of hate. Yeah, think of hate. Yeah, no love. no love, brother. That's and right. See a lot of those. If you if you go back uh, over in Acts, you read that where the uh, you know the, the whole city was confused. Mm-hmm. You know, all the ones up front may have known what was going on, but you know, yeah. hear all these others. Yeah, and and that I mean, that's funny. The news, if you've watched yeah. the news, some of these that's funny. Yeah. They come up. They on. what are you here for? Well, I don't know. I'm just here. I just follow them. Same things going on now than it did two thousand than was two thousand years ago. So really nothing has changed under the sun, like yeah. it says in Ecclesiastes. There's nothing new under the sun. Man is still evil, and as long as man does not accept the Lord, man will do evil things. So the mob mentality just uh, the all the mob mentality does is it gathers that evil together so that it and condenses it so that it can be practiced. It organizes a mob like we've read about and like we've been experiencing is nothing more than organized evil. That's all it is. Uh, the mobsters, remember, the mobsters. <laughs> They go around killing people that they don't like, man. The mobsters, that's, that's what it's all about. But that's going to thank the Lord Jesus is going to put an end to it one day. So that's the end of the study today, folks. Hope you enjoyed it.